Last class, we talked about how Japan entered the Sino-Japanese War with no clear plan. And while Japan was in China, Europe had to make a response to it. Europe had to choose what, how they respond to the Japanese belligerents in China. <clears throat> Britain, France, and America did not want to be involved in Asia in 1937. And this was... And this was apparent in two obvious cases. British, U.S. and what? Britain, France, and U.S. did not want to be involved in Asia in 1937 because, honestly, they were busy with Hitler. Hitler, by 1937, Hitler was doing a lot of stuff in Europe that was just keeping everyone occupied, and they didn't really want to add Japan on top of that. So they chose to not deal with Japan on... And two, two obvious occasions came up. First occasion was uh, when the, Brit the British HMS Ladybird, Japan attacked it, and Britain did not, Britain just accepted, accepted a, an apology and just moved on from there. Because uh, they didn't want to have any conflict with Japan. The British HMS Ladybird was attacked. The American USS Panay was sunk. And it was sunk right before the Nanjing Massacre, when the Japanese were bombing along the Yangtze River, and they, and they, sunk, they sunk that boat. And, uh, but America, once again, accepted an apology and moved on from there. So this is the HMS Ladybird, and this is the Panay. So the Panay was sunk when? During the Nanjing Right before the Nanjing Massacre. <laughs> and so this was... By then, it was obvious that they did not want to have uh, too a lot too much of conflict. Why did Japan attack? Uh, it was, it was, Japan was the, because they wanted to clear the perimeter. They wanted to clear the area around Nanjing to get rid of any enemy, and so the Panay was hanging out there, and so they thought it was a Chinese boat and attacked. By 1938, America took a harder line and decided to say, hey, you know what, we're going to stand firm against Japan. But not, and by the December of 1938, by the end of 1938, they were, uh, America was beginning to send aid to China, send resources, send help to China. By 1939, America decided that they need to cancel the Commerce and Navigation Treaty on July of 1939. What was the Commerce and the details are in your packet, but the Commerce and Navigation Treaty was basically the, the tr um, trading with Japan and giving them resources that they need. From U.S. giving them? Yep. Or just trading. But didn't they, like... Well, like, Japan has... Japan had money. Japan didn't have any... Japan didn't have a lot of resources. Japan did have money. So Japan could buy resources from America. But America, once once America decided to put an embargo and refuse to trade, that's when the real that's when the real problems began to happen um, between Japan and America. Nippon point. Right. So here's the uh, the U.S. gunboat Panay. Here's a this is actually this is an actual newspaper that was published at that time. Oh. This one you okay. don't have to write. Don't worry about that. We're just gonna read oh, this one. Cordo oh, oh, okay. um, Hall was the. Minister at that time, representing America, who had to make the decision to uh, to cancel the, the Commerce and Navigation Treaty. So right now, I'm just gonna have um, let's have Brittany read half, and we'll have Michael read the other half. Brittany first. Excellency, during recent years, the government of the United States has been examining the treaties of commerce and navigation enforced between the United States and foreign countries with a view of determining what changes may need may need to be made toward better serving the purpose for which such treaties are concluded. In the course of this sur survey, the government of the United States has come to the conclusion that the Treaty of Commerce and Navigation between the United States and Japan, which was signed at Washington on February 21, 1911, contains provisions which need new consideration. Michael. Toward preparing the way for such consideration and with a view <coughs> to better safeguarding and promoting American interests as new developments may require, the government of the United States acting in accordance with the procedures prescribed.
writes an article on uh, X5 1.17 yeah, um, of the treaty on the reference um, gives notice hereby of its desire that this treaty be terminated. And having thus given notice, we'll expect the treaty together with its accompanying, accompanying protocol to expire six months from this date. Right. <coughs> and so they made the decision to cancel the treaty. Of course, Japan did not like it. Japan, in fact, went on an out was outraged with this. They felt that uh, America canceling this treaty was outside of um, expected, uh, behave expected uh, acceptable behavior uh, between two countries. And they felt that by this time, America was cho clearly choosing the side of China. And therefore, Japan, uh, yeah, was outraged, but there really wasn't anything they could do about it. Prince Kanoa Fumimato, he was the prime minister um, from uh, June of 1937 to January of 1939. And so the, this, commerce, uh, this Commerce and Navigation Treaty right, was canceled in July of 1939. So, it's, so you can tell by, since he ended his power in January 1939, it was pretty clear that his his um, rule as a prime minister overlapped with the declining attitude of America towards Japan at that time. Can you repeat again? Prime minister was overlapped. His, his, him being prime minister went from 1937 to January 1939, right? <laughs> American attitudes, 1937 was when the U.S.'s Penny happened. 1938 was when America took a harder line. 1939 of July was when they canceled the treaty. So you can, you can see, clearly see that his, him being a prime minister overlapped with America's declining attitude towards Japan. You see what I mean, Joshua? Yes. So, yeah. And so it was also during his rule that the greater e uh, no, that militarism took over. He also proposed the idea of creating a new order in East Asia with the cooperation of China, Manchukuo, and Japan. And if you look at the map I'm showing you here, what's interesting is that, you look at this map, this is a map from a typical Japanese textbook, elementary school textbook. Right. What's interesting about the map? Take a look at it. There's all British flags, good. <coughs> Left side and right side, the like top of them, there is like represented, I'm not sure. Um, Aren't they fighting? Yes. Okay, they're fighting. Yeah. Little bit like Monopoly. <laughs> A little bit like Monopoly, okay. Which country's missing? Japan. Oh, oh Japan's you can sort of see. Korea. Korea. America. Oh, well, Korea and Japan are one. At America's time, right so. there. America is hanging out over here, look, checking over the horizon, okay? Germany. Which country's missing? China. Germany. Do you see a single Chinese flag anywhere? Oh. <laughs> right. So this is interesting because at that time you need to recognize the fact that Japan never declared war in China. They, they do not see themselves in China as a war. They remember, they remember they called it the China, the China incident. Yes. The Marco Polo Bridge incident was a China incident. And since then, it's always been the China incident where Japan just happens to be in China. Um, <laughs> Then here's another page. Here's another page of the same thing, and once again, uh, there's only Taiwan. Wait, what flag is that? What flag is this that? Flag? Yeah, Taiwan. This flag is a Taiwan flag. So it's like the, the, the KMT flag. So uh, so they have one flag here, representing re representing the government, but um, and that was the flag of China at that time. But the previous one had no flag of China. This one they do recognize China, and they do recognize there is a fight going on here. America looks sad. Uh, America looks sad and Britain looks sad as well. Oh, more like confused. So here they are looking 
And here another concern. Oh. <laughs> this is, uh... <laughs> this is called the... The... Te te something, something, something. Something territory. Basic, this basically means the Greater Japan, um... Greater Japan... Uh, hero heroic society where we're just together. <coughs> okay. It's hard to give a direct translation to that. But here you have them all hanging out together. Which countries are represented here? China. Uh, China. China. Japan. China. Is that Russia? India? Uh -huh. Taiwan? India? Congo. Vietnam. <laughs> and then you have. Uh, Aren't they all you, Asians? Yeah, basically you have a bunch of Asians. Where And who's taking the lead? Japan? Yeah. Oh, here. Oh, that looks scary. Japan. That looks scary. This is Ilwa, Ilwa Man. Okay. That's, that's Wa, right? Ilwa. Ilwa Man. Ilwa Man. Okay, this basically, if it's, uh, if it's translating, it's Japanese, uh, Chinese, Manchurian <coughs> cooperation. Chon World ha. peace. <laughs> <laughs> and so once again you have a situation where Japan is trying to take the lead and that's, this whole idea is called the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere where the idea is based on one country leading all the other countries kind of like how America uh, took the lead for all um, for all the countries in Latin America and it's modeled after America W.E.G. Beasley, it's in your handout, he's a historian, he suggests that uh, similar, similar to the Hossback Memorandum, there were a bunch of, there was a Japanese conference of ministers and military leaders in July of 1940 that agreed, that, and in that meeting they agreed that Japan should establish herself in Indochina, Thailand, Burma, Malaysia and the Dutch East Indies. Japan should establish herself. Okay. So this is, he's basically saying that in, in uh, July 1940 there was a meeting between all the Japanese ministers and military leaders deciding that Japan should assert herself as the leader of, um, of the countries. And the countries include, you guys ready? Yes. Indochina. Thailand, Burma, 